Welcome to another edition of Prior Power Principles. We are happy that you could join us. Today our topic is prior power. And our prior focus today, I will be praying for the education system as they return and plan mentally, physically, and otherwise for the new semester that lies ahead. And Elder David will be praying for the spirit of earnest prior. And again, we usually share our testimony with you guys, so stay tuned. Before we get into it, let's bow our heads and ask Elder David to uh, do our opening prior for us. All right, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you and we have nothing to offer you except ourselves, our hearts. We're asking that you would take possession of them. Father, we can't even give them of our own volition, but we're responding to your heart's desire that we would be one with you as Jesus was one with you. And so, Father, we come to you and we ask that you would open the eyes of our understanding. We're asking that, that your word and your power would become a living and real principle in our heart. We're asking that, that uh, Jesus and religion will become not just a theory, not just a doctrine, not just a philosophy, but yes. a, the living presence of a real Savior and the indwelling of his Spirit and the power of, of love and life and joy and peace would, would envelop us, that it would be seen by those around us that we have been with Jesus. Father, give us your Holy Spirit, whom you promised, Jesus said, when he comes, he will take the things of mine and will reveal them to you. Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit would reveal Jesus to us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, how was your la uh, how was your week since we did the last episode of Prayer Power Principle, Elder David? Oh, it was good. It was good. In fact, I was listening to that sermon that you uh, posted from the camp meeting a week ago, and that was powerful. I was excited about that. Thanks for sharing that. Yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. All right, so guys, we are going to go into our sharing of our testimony and I'm going to go first and then Elder David will follow. So I just wanted to share something and it was about the camp meeting that Elder David has just uh, mentioned. So I've been a vegetarian for uh, I think uh, many years now, about 17, um, 17 years or so. And uh, let me see, wait, let me, let me check carefully. No, over 20 years I've been a vegetarian. Um, and recently I wanted to go like plant-based vegan because sometimes I have like dairy and I have chocolate and I have cheese and egg. And, you know, even though I don't like egg and cheese, sometimes I do eat it. And I've been praying and, you know, I've been doing like presentations online with different uh, groups. And I've always pointed out, you know, a vegan diet, a vegan diet. But in my life, I was not practicing like a 100% vegan diet. And I was like, Lord, please help me to get to the point where I'm actually, you know, living what I'm preaching. And so I believe God opened the way for me to go to this camp meeting. And after the camp meeting finished, which was, you know, last week, and I came home, I just resolved that I am not going to touch any more um, vegetarian thing that contain like dairy or you know cheese and so on and God has given me the victory in fact I you know I cleaned out like the dairy ice cream that I have and I'm thinking of you know just buying some <laughs> non-dairy ice cream so you know that is my testimony it doesn't matter you know what you are you know what you are saying it must match your lifestyle and I think that's where the real power lies well that was my experience yeah, I I remember uh, when I saw you last week. Um, someone offered you something. He said, "Oh no, we're vegetarian. We're, we're vegans." And I thought, <laughs> "She's serious about this." <laughs> that was good, and it was a hot day out too. It would have been a yes. nice, cool drink. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> oh, speaking of uh, diet and uh, overcoming uh, struggles with diet, I've got a friend who who's struggled all of his life. In fact, uh, we were praying at one point and, 
and we were asking the Lord to show him why he struggled so much, why he wasn't gaining victory. And the Lord took him back, he said, to back to when he was a young young boy and his his father left their family and they they were very, very poor, very poor. But what one thing that they would do is as mom would give him some money and he would go down to the store and they would buy he would buy junk food, right? He'd buy certain kind of chips for her and certain kind of chips for him and some candy. And they said they liked it. They liked the salty stuff and they had always liked to finish with something sweet. Well, that had been the trend for his entire life. And he has really struggled with his weight and diet stuff all his life. Uh, with a brief, uh, he, he did go to a self-supporting institution where he was in a controlled environment and he lost a lot of weight. He was doing really good. Anyway, now he's on his own and uh, he's really struggling. So the Lord brought back to him this time when his father left. He was a thin little guy before that. When his father left, there was this abandonment and, and rejection and feelings of rejection and stuff. Somehow he turned to, to uh comforting himself and, and indulging uh, himself by what he ate. The Lord showed him that. So I was showing him what we would do is we go into the presence of Jesus. And we're asking Jesus to show him where are these problems? What are the roots? What are the, what are the blockage that keeps him from gaining victory in Jesus? Right. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord brought him clear back to that root. And so then uh, for some reason he decided he didn't want to pray like that. And Oh, He's put on maybe 20 pounds in the last month or month and a half and mm. just was out of control. And it's like when the Lord is setting you free and you're coming into his presence, if you walk away from that, that's not good. I knew that was going to happen. So anyway, uh, last uh, Sunday, um, we're, we're talking and I said, you know, he's telling me about when at nighttime, he says he just has this incredible hunger that comes over him. It's just overwhelming. And he says he knows it's coming every time and he'll end up going down to the snack machine and eating junk food and stuff like that. So um, mm -hmm. we were talking about, I said, there must be something that's holding you back from this victory. There's something that, that the, that the Lord needs to show you. So we, mm -hmm. so we prayed together. We came into the presence of God and God began to show him some stuff and he would put it on Jesus on the cross, and then he would thank him for victory. Thank him, Jesus, for taking that from him. Well, it was after we got off the phone that he was uh, reading his Bible, and the Spirit of God came to him and said, uh, look up uh, Luke 17, 6, and it says, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, he said, you will say unto this mulberry tree, be plucked up by the roots and be cast into the sea or planted in the sea. Well, we had just been talking about the roots, the, the roots of why we struggle with what we struggle with, why we don't have victory. There's root reasons. There's causes that are under the surface that we're not aware of. And so he saw this. If you have gr faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mulberry tree, be plucked up by the roots. And all of a sudden, it was like the Spirit of God just took over. And he says, Lord, I pluck that up and I cast it into the sea. And he says, it was like, I could feel this something leaving me. And he mm -hmm. says, I have had victory. He was called, he called me today and he's just praising God and praising God for 10 days now. Absolute victory, eating two meals a day and being satisfied with much less than he had been satisfied. Not this terrible, incessant hunger that it cannot be uh, satiated and, and just He's so he's praising God. You can only imagine what it's like. And he started, he, the, the weight is starting to come off. And, and we were just praising God this morning. Anyway, I was so excited Amen. for him. But the Thank point God. is this. In the presence of God is where healing takes place. Mm -hmm. Like when the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. Is that just a cliche to you? Or do you actually go there? Do you mm -hmm. actually go into the presence of God boldly before the throne of grace or is that just become a cliche it should be real and you should meet him there and he will heal and help and cleanse and purify and you will be so excited
Amen. And I would like to add, he will give the power. <laughs> That's exactly where it comes from. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, that was just beautiful, that sharing, Elder David. Um, I don't know if you know about, um, you know, growing up, I usually see on TV and like young people, they would always watch these cartoons. Like, I don't know if you've heard of Power Rangers and they would be like different colors. And um, I remember when I was a kid, we used to watch that program too. And like my siblings would be like, we would always say, okay, I'm the red one. And then a person say, I'm the green one, I'm the blue one. You know, everybody <laughs> takes one because it, because it makes it, it, yeah. It makes you feel like, you know, you have like this sense of power. And in today's day, we have like different characters. We have like Captain America and the others that, you know, action figures that, you know, even adults collect these action figures and keep at home because they like the power that, you know, is portrayed in these action figures. They can do supernatural things, um, flying, I mean, extra strength and all of these things. But, you know, today, as we were talking about prior power, it's the it's like these things, you know, it's the extra things that, you know, the super um, strength, everything, it can be attained from prior. And we're going to walk you through um, some of the principles to attain praying this way that you have power. So um, over to you, Elder David, what, what were some of the points from um, this chapter, chapter nine? And just before Elder, while Elder David is uh, preparing, if you guys would like to join us, we are reading from the book um, Prior by Ellen G. White. You can buy it, um, Elder David, as a hard copy. I use my phone, so you can use, you can download it, download it, and you can follow with us. We're at chapter nine today, and we're talking about um, prayer power. All right, so yeah, Elder David. Oh yeah, the first, this is a rich chapter. I, I'm excited about this. It's and, my and favorite the, one, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the first paragraph, it says, those who seek God in secret, telling the Lord their needs and pleading for help, will not plead in vain. Thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. As we make Christ our daily companion, we shall feel that the powers of the unseen world are all around us. And by looking unto Jesus, we shall become assimilated, assimilated to his image. By beholding, we become changed. The character is softened, refined, and ennobled for the heavenly kingdom. The sure result of our intercourse with the fellow, and fellowship with our Lord will be increased piety, purity, and fervor. There will be a growing intelligence in prayer. We are receiving the divine education, and this is illustrated in a life of diligence and zeal. I love that. Praise the Lord. Um, so, it, you know, that, that part is talking about how prior increases um, spiritual strength. And I do believe that, you know, some people wake up and you're like, I feel like I don't have the spiritual strength to just go through today. Well, you've just had heard Elder David read that it is by praying and, you know, praying earnestly um, that, you know, the character is softened, is refined, is ennobled for the heavenly kingdom, and it increased piety, purity, and fervor. You know, just to add two things to those, Elder David, um, in the next paragraph, um, there are two more things that I'd like to add. It says, through our association with them, that is um, a connection with God, the, the light, the peace, the serenity that rule in our hearts. So when we pray with power, with earnestness, with like sincerity of heart, with everything, not pretending, you know, the real prayer, just pouring out our request to God, this is, it, it says, is what happened. The light, the peace, the serenity, it rules in our hearts. And not only that, it keeps the spirit in peace under all circumstances. Amen. And you would think that, oh, you mean all circumstances or maybe some circumstances? No, it says all circumstances. Your spirit is kept in peace when you pray this power this earnest prayer that we are talking about today so this is one principle that is something that you want to hold on is something that i have held on to and 
it's best to do it early in the morning when you wake up go to your prayer closet i tell you it makes a difference in your lives and i can share a testimony to elder david where go ahead you know the mornings when i don't go first to prayer i am more impatient i get upset more um everything just seems out of place i lack um self-control compared to the mornings when i first see god i am more controlled even when um, temptations come or something just um, unknown come upon me, I have more self-control and I respond differently. So we see a difference between like flesh and spirit. You know, one is just you without God. And then the other one is like the Holy Spirit is inside of you because, you know, it's not by our strength that we do these things. There's nothing we can glory or we can say, hey, I am good. I overcome. No, everything is just because of our communication with heaven and he sent these divine agencies to help us. That's the only thing we can glory for. So I can clearly see this in my life. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. I can testify to that. Yeah, <laughs> through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the presence of holy angels. Amen. It says, uh, as, we, as we make Christ our daily companions, we will feel that the powers of the unseen world are all around us. That's holy angels. The angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him, and he delivers them. But he also, the, the, they bring an atmosphere of love and joy and peace. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That's one of my favorites, because... Amen. With everything that's going on in our world today, it's easy to let things offend us. And uh, we have perfect peace. The, the Word of God says, the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know when you're abiding in Christ, when you have His peace. Anytime you lose that peace, you know you're, you're stepping into self and you're going down a wrong path. And then you mm -hmm. immediately come back, Lord, give me your peace. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yes, because the peace that the world gives you, it's temporal. You know, you'll feel calm and good for a moment. Until but then something that crosses wears, you. Huh? <laughs> Until something crosses you. <laughs> exactly. So we need the peace that even in the middle of the fiercest battles or trial, you can have this calm assurance. I mean, that, that is divine. <laughs> it is. When no one can offend you, you know it's of God. <laughs> yes, yes, amen. There is another part that says, prayer keeps us in God's power. Unless this is so, we shall never be successful in breaking down pride and overcoming the power of temptation to sinful indulgences, which keep us from the savior so you know every day um that you go out in the world every day that i go out into the world and the world doesn't mean you have to go outside your house it could be right inside your house there you start your day temptations come so don't believe because oh this is a lockdown i'm not going to work so i'm safe from the devil no <laughs> The devil is present right there in your bedroom, in your bathroom, in your kitchen, in your living room, on the patio. He's right there and his objective is, you know, the, the Bible says he's a killer, he, he steals, and that's what he does. He's a liar. So he comes and he tells you things, he whispers, um, you know, things to you. I watch in some cartoons where, I mean, this is not real, but you can see it like clearly what I'm saying. Like sometimes they would portray like a demon on the, like a little devil on the shoulder <laughs> yes. and like a little angel. Well, yes. somewhat is that's how um, the devil and the Holy Spirit works because, you know, spiritual battle takes place in our mind. So sometimes the devil is whispering, oh, you remember what you did yesterday? And then like the angel or the good one is saying, no, I've forgiven you. You're overcome. But then you're torn between two and, and you just feel like, oh, I don't know which one to listen to it, you know, but, you know, when the devil speaks something to you, what one good thing I would suggest you do based on, you know, prayer power principle repeat a scripture that speaks specifically to what he's reminding you of and you and if you can't remember anything just 
speak a scripture. It just says, the Lord has forgiven me of all my sins. He has washed me and he's made me whole. I am the child of God. I am an overcomer. Just keep repeating it to him. And I believe, you know what the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Don't wait one day or one week or one month to resist the devil. Resist him right away when they're there. And you will have this, you know, this overcoming power that draws you closer to God and the devil will leave you. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I amen to that. I tell, can't tell you how many times when you come under temptation, the enemy's putting thoughts in your mind and, and it's like, no, Jesus died for me, even me. He gave himself for me. I am his. He owns me. I choose to serve him today. And trust yourself to the, ha to the hands that were nailed to the cross. There's a statement here that says, devote your mind to spiritual things. Keep your mind from dwelling upon yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a statement in um, Desire of Ages, and I can't remember what page it's on, but it says, um, it is the love of self that brings unrest. Mm -hmm. If you find your soul without the peace of God, it's because you're dwelling on yourself. And it says here, keep your mind from dwelling on yourself. Uh, Colossians 3, 1 to 3 says, if you have been raised up together with Christ, keep thinking on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, not on earth. It says, uh, for you have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I go back to that statement. No, I have died. My life is hidden with Christ in God. He's raised me up and seated me with him in heavenly places. Amen. It's real. Yeah. Yeah, it's a constant battle, you know, just as you watch movies, some of you probably watch movies and see, you know, two soldiers fighting. It's the same thing for a Christian. We every day, and this happens every day, and it doesn't happen every week. So you think you can prepare on a weekly basis. No, it happens every day throughout the day, moment by moment. So every moment we have to dress for battle. And I believe it's Ephesians 6 that talks about, you know, the, the armor that we should put on, you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and, more, you know, the, the helmet, uh, sorry, the, the, the sword, which is the word of God. And unless we memorize, if we don't memorize passages, then the Holy Spirit cannot bring it back to our mind to use it, you know, against the devil when he comes. So I would encourage you guys, you know, every single day, try to, you know, just try to memorize a scripture and commit to memory. You know, Spirit of Prophecy, Spirit of Prophecy says in some other place, if you commit a, a scripture to memory, it, you know, it keeps the devil out of the soul. It keeps the soul alive, if you can do that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Another part that I like, it says divine power awaits those who want it. So we, we understand from the beginning that Jesus does not force his way upon the heart. We have to give it. I know some parents would force their children to eat. That could be a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> it depends on how you do it. But you know, if it's good food, you try to find tactics that you can get your child to eat, you know, their fruits, their vegetables, maybe prepare it in different ways or, you know, make it look appealing or so on. But when it comes to, um, to our, like the spiritual way, um, what, what drives us to, um, to prayer? It, it is recognizing that we are depending, dependent upon God. So if we feel like, oh, I can do all of this on my own, we will not need to pray. So that is the first thing. We need to feel that I cannot do certain things on my own. And that is what will drive us to prayer. You know, the, the spirit of prophecy says your feeling of dependence will drive you to prayer. So prayer and effort, effort and prayer, they go hand in hand. Yes. This was one of my favorite ones, uh, and it's what I will be praying for when it comes time to pray. It says, yes. the greatest blessing that God can give to man is the spirit of earnest prayer. Yes. All heaven is open before the man of prayer. The ambassadors of Christ will have a power with the people after they have, with earnest supplication, come before God. Notice what it says there. 
the greatest blessing that God can give to man. So this is not something you have to work up on your own. Yes, you may have to persevere in coming into his presence, right? Mm -hmm. But it says that God is giving you a gift, and that gift is the spirit of earnest prayer. You will not be tired. You know, some people struggle to pray for 15 minutes, and, and that's because they don't have the spirit of prayer. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit takes over your prayer life, you'll find an hour is not enough. It's just, it just, mm -hmm. it starts flowing. You'll find yourself uh, just amazed how fast time will fly. Yeah. But, but we have to receive that from God. It's not something that we can work up on our own. Come to Jesus. Ask him to teach you to pray. Submit yourself to him. Ask him if there's anything in the way that's blocking your prayer life. Is there anything that's keeping you from having the Holy Spirit in you to cause you to pray and give you a spirit of praise and adoration? And Amen. What a difference it makes. Yeah, praise God. Um, you know, one of my favorite part too is just saying that even a brief prayer can bring spiritual power. And you know, some it, it makes me remember when Peter was sinking, and you know, the words he shouted was, "Lord, save me." That was a brief prayer. That and was one of my favorites. Huh? That's one of my favorite prayers. Yes. And, yeah. Amen. And, and sometimes, you know, even though we may be mature Christians or, you know, like just coming into the faith, baby Christians, as you want to call it, or somewhere in between, there are points that we're going to reach when we feel like we can't pray. Like, I don't know the words to put together to even pray. But, you know, when we can't find the words to make it, you know, into a prayer, it says we can do a a brief prayer. And even more than that, when we send up that brief prayer, Christ himself translates that prayer and, you know, adds what he needs to add to that, his own, you know, words with it, and he ascends it up to the throne of God. Yeah, this, uh, on page 83, it says, um, the strength acquired in prayer to God will prepare us for our daily duties. The temptations to which we are daily exposed make prayer a necessity in order that we may be kept by the power of God through faith. So it is God that keeps us. Sometimes it's, it's easy for us to fall into the trap of thinking that I have to protect myself. I have to stop myself from sinning. Mm -hmm. Did you see the difference here? It says, in order that we may be kept by the power of God through faith. Mm -hmm. So when it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, that fear and trembling and working out your own salvation is really to be connected with God so that his power works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. Your battle is not with sin. Your battle is being filled with the spirit of Christ and being filled with his victorious life and, and his Holy Spirit, that is the power that will make you a victor in the battle with sin. Amen. Praise God. That is so right. You know, um, you might be wondering, like, what are some things that um, I should pray for? You know, when prior power, do I pray for a house, a car, a spouse for those who are single, um, for children, for those who don't have um what do we pray for you know the spirit of prophecy always guides us and it says you know pray for the pardon of sin for the holy spirit for a christ-like temper for wisdom for strength to do his work for any gift he has promised we may ask and the promise is he shall he shall receive you know, it reminds me of the scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I think it's Matthew 6 and verse 33. And all the other things will come after that. Because sometimes we have it the reverse. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, the next uh, paragraph on page 85 is true faith and true prayer. Mm. How strong are they? They are as two arms by which the human suppliant lays hold upon the power of infinite love. What I began to notice uh, back in the beginning uh, when the Lord was drawing me, well, after actually it was after, after my conversion. 
he told me to start studying the sanctuary. So I started mm -hmm. studying the sanctuary and I was, it was so boring to me. It was like, I know what this color means. I know what that color means. And I know all the details <laughs> and all the facts and all these things. And, and I was saying, Lord, but he kept prodding me. You need to understand the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So I began to study it. And then one day I was listening to uh, a lady, uh, Carol Zarska. And she was telling about the experience of the sanctuary where God is bringing us into his presence. And each one of those uh, articles in the sanctuary was an experience that God has for his people. And the whole purpose of, of the cross and, and the, the altar and the labor and the, the, incense, the incense, the altar of incense and the, the candlesticks representing the Holy Spirit, all the whole purpose of that whole thing it's for us to be able to come into his presence. It's to clean us up, to come into his presence, and to experience communion with him in his presence in the secret place of the Most High. And all of a sudden, I realized that all this knowledge, all this doctrine about the sanctuary was just the structure. It was just the framework. It was like the skeleton. But there was no life in it. And when I realized that Jesus was drawing us into his presence and he was filling us with his Holy Spirit so that we could come boldly before the throne of grace, come into his presence, it became a living experience. And when it became an experience, it had a whole different meaning. And I remember it was like my whole life changed. It was like, I, I, I went out and it was like, I could hardly believe it that all these things that I'd been studying now made all this sense. And it was like light had poured into this empty structure of a doctrine and it became a living experience. And I remember immediately when I began to share that, I, I walked into, we had a prayer group. It was at camp meeting that I, that I had learned this. And I said, God is inviting us to dwell in the secret place of the most high. And I saw these people, it's like they started and they, and they, it was like it hit them like a, like an imp, something impacted them and they, and they took notice and it was like the words went into them. It was, <laughs> it was like the Holy Spirit was using those words to just bring truth to people. And that's what he wants to do with us. He wants to bring us into his presence. He wants to fill us with his spirit so that the words that we speak will have an impact on people. And will be transforming into the in their lives. Yes, that's that should be the objective, you know. As reading, as, well, I began reading a Ministry of Healing recently, and you know, it's just eye-opening. It's a wonderful book, and it's just telling us that, you know, as Christians, you know, as reformers, we have to be filled with love and compassion. You know, so it can only be accomplished by you know the strength of the Holy Spirit, because you know, by nature, we're all selfish and we are all opinionated. <laughs> so it takes the spirit of Christ to really break down, you know, those uh, barriers and help us to think of others, to be unselfish. Um, another point that I like about this, it says prior strengthen us against uh, Satan's temptations. I don't know if you've ever come across uh, someone, Elder David, growing up, which you would consider like a very spiritual person and you just love to be in their presence because you feel as if you're in the presence of God. They're just a good uh, representative of, you know, like who a true Christian is. Um, I remember like growing up in my church, there are a few people and I just always like to be around them because I feel like, wow, what love, what compassion, what tenderness. It's, they, they almost would they, they, it seemed to me like they're Jesus, you know, <laughs> and you meet these, you know, like we are called to be Christians, which is like Christ, you know, to be like Christ. But when you meet these people, you just want to stay with them. You want to be with them. You probably want to follow them home. You want to live with them. You just want to be in their presence all the time. Unfortunately, um, that cannot be so because we have to part ways when church is finished. They go home to their families. You go home to your families. And I remembered like, you know, in the, the story of um, the, the first, uh, the first, what would we call it? The first missionary that Jesus sent out, the demon, demonic, the man that was filled with the unclean spirit. When Christ healed him, he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus says, no, go to your hometown and tell what I have done. And I believe it's the same thing. You know, when we, 
when we meet someone like this, we just want to be in their presence all the time. Well, guess what? You can be in this presence all the time because it, on page, what was that? Page 85, it says, but God does not leave them to fight unaided against the tempter. That is the devil. They have an all powerful helper. Isn't that good news? Yes. So you can have this all powerful helper with you all the time, every hour, every minute, every second. His name is Jesus in the form of the Holy Spirit. He will be there. He will fill you with joy, with peace, with compassion. And the avenue is through prayer. You pray and you ask God to reveal more of himself. You know, by beholding Jesus, we become changed into his image so we become like this <laughs> amen amen on the bottom of 86 it says the word that was spoken to jesus at the jordan this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased embraces humanity god spoke to jesus as, as our representative with all our sins and weaknesses we are not to cast aside be, we are not cast aside as worthless he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The glory that rested upon Christ as a privilege of the love of God for us, it tells us of the power of prayer, how the human voice may reach the ear of God and our petitions find acceptance in the courts of heaven. Mm -hmm. By sin, earth was cut off from heaven and alienated from his communion, but Jesus was connected, has connected it again with the sphere of his glory. His love has encircled man and reached the highest heaven. The light which fell from the open portals above on the head of our Savior will fall upon us as we pray to help to resist temptation. Mm -hmm. There was one time it was my mom. My mom was dying of cancer. And uh, we were all gathered around her bed. And, and it was the last day or so of her life. And, mm -hmm. and she had a morphine drip because she had bone cancer was in terrible pain so sometimes especially at night time she would get confused and she um, she had a bad nightmare or something and she just kept crying out it was like nothing we could do i i did not go over uh, my dad and my sisters went over there to try to console her and help her and i was still sitting our, all our beds were in a big circle around her bed right mm -hmm. and uh, Nothing would calm her down. Nothing would cons console her. And it was like the Spirit of God came to me and said, David, she spent her life interceding for you. Now you need to intercede for her. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Lord, teach me to pray. And, and he did. I remembered, I remembered there was a, a quotation that, that Spirit of Prophecy says that that the enemy takes advantage of, of people when they're sick and their minds are weak, and he asserts his influence over them to take advantage of that weakness. Mm -hmm. So I said, Lord, I just ask you to drive back the evil angels. And then, and then I, saw, uh, I saw Stephen. Here they were stoning him, and they were, mm -hmm. and they were, uh, they were killing him, and he, and he saw heaven opened, and he saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. He was given a vision to, to, to strengthen him as he was facing uh, this death by stoning. And, and I, I realized that God wanted me to pray for my mother that heaven would be opened, that she would be strengthened to face this death that was, that was coming. So I started to intercede. Lord, I ask that you would open heaven and let her get a glimpse of Jesus. They were trying to calm her down and, and she just kept being agitated. And finally she just stopped and there was peace, just quiet. Mm. And she said, heaven open, wow. heaven open. Mm. Prayer that God indicts through the power of his Holy Spirit is powerful. He can open up heaven. He can reveal Jesus to us when we need it or when those that we know need it. I'll never forget that. That was a precious, precious memory for me. 
Praise the Lord. That that is just so touching. Um, that's wonderful. I believe this can just take us right into our next segment with you know just praying as you as you mentioned. Unless you would like to share another um, another last last thought, Elder David. Oh no, let's let's and, go ahead and pray. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So again, we uh, that was just so touching. Um, Elder David is going to be praying for you know the you know, earnestness in praying. And I'll be praying um, for the parents, teachers, students as the new uh, school year starts. So let's, let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do praise you and magnify you because you are our faithful friend. Lord, when we look upon ourselves, we know that we're helpless. Lord, we do not have gifts to bring to you, Lord. We are completely empty and void. But day by day, your faithfulness is renewed and you clothe us, Lord. You come near to us. You take us through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord. You comfort us, Lord. You lead us beside the still waters. Lord, you take care of us, Lord. And for that, we just want to lift up our hands toward heaven, bow on our knees and say, thank you for saving a soul like mine. Father, today we just come to present the parents, the teachers, the students into your hands, Lord. They are yours because you created them. Lord, as a new semester unfolds, there are many anxious hearts. There are many worried souls. Lord, they do not have peace inside. They, they are worried about the pandemic too, Lord. And there may be other specific families who are not able to afford um, you know, financially because they've been affected by this pandemic, Lord. So many cares, oh God. But I pray that your Holy Spirit, who is all powerful, oh God, will open doors that were never open, Lord. God, you've done it before. We've seen how you, you are the God of the impossibilities, Lord God. You says with man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible if we believe. Lord, we need more intercessors. We need more prior warriors. We need those who are praying with radical faith, Lord. Knowing that when we pray, oh God, you hear and you open these doors for your people, Lord. I pray that you will open doors for the teachers, for the staff, for um, everyone that is uh, in the education system, Lord. Bless, cover, guide, anoint, heal, provide, make a way, Lord, when there seems to be no way. Lord, I pray especially, Lord, that you will instill peace in their hearts, Lord, even for the teachers and the parents and the students who are worried. Lord, I pray that you will bring healing to their mind. And Lord, may you protect us even this pandemic, Lord. I pray also that those who call themselves by the name of Christ will rise up at this moment and see an opportunity where they can minister, Lord, because hearts are open to know more about you. Amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for what you have done, for what you are doing, Lord, and what you're going to do. And we lift you up and we continue to be faithful. And please, Lord, only by your Holy Spirit can we accomplish this. So we leave our lives into your hand, trusting you with all that we have. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Just going to read this before I pray. It says, The greatest blessing that God can give to man is the spirit of earnest prayer. All heaven is open before the man of prayer. I want that to be you, dear brothers and sisters. And I want more. I want to have a, a, a heart that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. I know he wants more for us. Don't you think? You think God wants more for us than we've experienced? I think that uh, we're coming into the time of the latter rain. And the gospel will close in no less power than it began on the day of Pentecost. There's more before us, greater light and glory that's, that's ever been shown upon God's people. That's just ahead of us. I want to have a heart that's open to receive everything that he has for us. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, I don't know how to pray as I ought. You said in your word, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit will make intercession for us. 
with groanings too deep for words, that you will take over our prayer life, that you will empower us. Father, that quotation said that the greatest blessing that you can give us is the spirit of earnest prayer. And Father, I'm asking the spirit of earnest prayer would take possession of us even now. Father, not just upon Gabrielle and myself, but upon all who are listening. I'm asking that, that you would move upon our hearts. I'm asking that you would pour out your spirit upon us, that you would move upon the inner workings of our heart. Father, I'm asking, especially just like that friend of mine who, when we prayed together, Lord, you began to lift the barriers between him and you. And he began to pray and, and, you, and he gave, you gave him a promise that if he had faith like the grain of a mustard seed that he would say to this tree, be plucked up by the roots. Father, there's some of us here who are struggling with things and have struggled with them for years, maybe decades, that need to come out by the roots. And Father, I'm asking that, that you would empower us. Father, I'm taking hold of that issue right now in the power that you gave us through the power of Jesus Christ. All power is given to us in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go and make disciples. Lord, I'm asking that that, that tree by the roots would be plucked up even now, Lord. Pluck it up. Pull it up tug on it, Lord, until it breaks free from including the roots, Lord, not just break off at the surface, Father. Father, you said um, in, in your word over and over that some trees bear bad fruit and some trees bear forth good fruit. Lord, if there is a tree in our life that is bearing bad fruit, I'm asking that you, through your Holy Spirit, would just pluck it up by the roots so it won't grow back, Lord and cast that into the sea. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Father, I just ask that, that our faith would grow strong, that we would dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that our words would come forth from your presence, and that uh, your words would be spirit, and they would be life, that they would impact others, that especially for our children, Lord. I'm asking that uh, your word would, would be come alive to them. Father, I thank you and praise you that my boys uh, just talked to them this week and they are giving up their computer gaming and they are deciding to spend time in the word of God. And I'm praising you and thanking you, Father, that your word is powerful. And I'm thanking you that their hearts are turning to you. Father, I'm asking for the children of those who with whom we pray now, that you would that you would pour upon each parent the spirit of genuine prayer, fervent prayer, that, that they would see the manifestations of the power of God, that we would see the power of Jesus' intercession, that we would not trust in our own efforts alone, but they, we would expect Jesus, whoever lives to make intercession, to intervene in those lives that we ask. Father, we just praise your name for your power. Lord, we just want to praise you that, that it is not up to us. Uh, it is not up to our power. It, it is not because of our power or our strength, but according to your spirit, Lord. We just want to thank you for that. And I'm asking that you would do, accomplish these things for your namesake. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, we're about to close, but Elder David, could you just share any final thoughts? And I'll do the same, and then I'll do the closing prayer. Okay. Anything, um, you know, on your heart <laughs> that you'd like uh, to share? There was something, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, yeah, not remembering what it was. There was something... <laughs> Anyway, okay, while um, you're remembering, can I just can I ask a question um, and we both can answer. Can you recall in your life a time when you prayed without uh, power and a time when you prayed with power? What made the difference? <laughs> oh, well, the first <laughs> one that comes to my mind, <laughs> there was a lady who was demon possessed. And <laughs> one time uh, uh, this 
a male voice came out of her mouth and and um, <laughs> it was yeah it was like and and i said i said the lord rebuke you and he says you're weak i don't have to obey you and i knew exactly what he meant i was i had not surrendered to god i had not been in prayer i'd just gotten off work and you know how it is sometimes when you're working and you just space gets between you and jesus mm. i went right down on my knees right there and prayed and asked god to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness mm. and then when you speak god gives you power amen <laughs> they have to leave <laughs> they are not welcome yes um for me um I find the times when I pray without power are the times when I'm not closest to Jesus, when I'm not very focused, when I'm not doing like Bible study um, and do like fasting and like fellowshipping. I feel like weak and my prayer also just like when I pray, I feel no power. But when I do the reverse of that, when I like, you know, maybe once a week, I just do some like Bible reading or I read the spirit of prophecy, I read the Bible, I read like our Sabbath school quarterly. I find that when I pray, like my prayer has this sense of power. So if you're wondering, like, you know, how do I pray with power? Well, we've just shared a little instance of how you can pray with power. And again, if you have any prayer requests, you can send your prayer request to prayerpowerprinciples at gmail.com. And I'm so glad, Elder David, that today's title matches our, <laughs> our the name of our, <laughs> or it's Prayer Power Principles, and the title is Prayer Power. Yes. All right, let's have the closing prayer and then, yeah, let's, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much today for all that you've done. You've been faithful, you've been compassionate, you've been kind, you've been um, our strength in the time of weakness, you've been our beauty in the time of our ashes, you've been the potter when we are broken, you have been um, the shelter in the time of storm, you've been our cloud uh, when we go through a fiery uh, trial day, so to speak. Lord, you've been the fire and the light in our darkness. Lord, we thank you for all that you have shown us, Lord, who you are. And Lord, help us to make a reservation to be faithful to you, that even though their trials may come, that we will stand with the brave, with our face to the foe, and say, Lord, prepare me and put on, let us put on the old armor of God so that we can fight. You know, as the hymn says, a faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We thank you for uh, this faith that we can have and the sword of the spirit, which we use to, you know, and even the shield of faith that we use in preparing for a spiritual battle. We pray for, um, you know, the, you know, for everyone to be earnest, you know, just open their hearts and pray to God about everything that they're going through because God already knows. Again, we want to uh, present the teachers and the students, everyone. I pray for Elder David, for his family, for the people he come in contact with. Bless me, Lord. Bless all the people in the reach of our voice listening to this program, Lord. Cover them under your blood. Help them to understand that faith, with faith, they can accomplish all things. And Teach them, O oh God, diligently to pray and to leave everything at the altar of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you to this end in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's it until we see you next week. God bless you. And Elder David, any last word you want to say before we go? Uh, only that, you know, um, it seems like if, if, if our faith is not strong in the Lord, that we have a lot of things that, that become cliches, like being born again, that's just a cliche. Being broken on the rock, that's just a cliche. Mm -hmm. uh, coming boldly before the throne of grace, that's just a cliche. But these things need to be a living experience with us. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that our, that our uh, those cliches, which are a real experience, mm -hmm. They're, they're talking about something that needs to happen in our hearts. And the thing that before, before we uh, met today, the thing that came to my mind was, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. The Lord resists the proud, but he hears the heart, the con broken and contrite heart. That's the key to power is humility before God.
Praise the Lord. God bless you and see you guys next week.